Welcome to ZZ Talk with Zeno and Zeus. Uh, this is the show about two guys who love to talk about any and everything. Uh, it's going to be a conversation about entertainment, sports, and obviously a heavy dose of politics. Um, so today, as always, we're going to start with uh, corrections. Um, and then after that, well, here's the rest of the agenda. So it's Whoa. corrections. Whoa. Corrections. Oh, sorry, sorry. We're going to start with corrections. Thanks. Um, and then after that, um, we're going to tie in to our top five sports moments. The reason we're doing sports this time is because it's a change of pace for the next 16 or so weeks since the NFL season has started and we want to push out our sports clips a little earlier. So we're doing top five sports moments and then leading into a week one recap of the NFL. And then after that, Zeus and I are going to do our week two predictions. For the rest of the season, we're going to be keeping tally of who gets the wins and losses right. And maybe at the end of the season, we'll have bragging rights. Maybe we'll, we'll figure out what the wager is. Um, and then leading into... So, so that leads into our entertainment section, where we're going to talk about the, the Academy Awards new uh, diversity criteria. Um, what our thoughts are on that and so on and so forth. And then our politics section, we're going to talk about the... Trump ABC town hall that happened on Tuesday, um, Tuesday, the 15th of September. Um, and then we're gonna talk about science and politics, um, as well as fear mongering in politics. And that's our agenda. Zeus? Yeah, I hope you covered everything because I kind of lost you for a second, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but uh, let's I, go, uh, let's dive in uh, right into corrections. You wanna do your correction? Well. I know what, you know what, let me do the corrections first because Zeno wanted to correct me, but I'm going to correct myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. I checked myself. First, one correction. No, 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 no. You got to do the thing. Oh, corrections. So anyways. So one, one thing that I wanted to really quickly point out, it's a serious, which is a serious topic, which is, um, the name of the gentleman that I mentioned in one of our clips about how he, it's in Mexico, somebody was dealing with some police, they dealt with some police brutality themselves. Uh, the gentleman's name, um, I found, I finally got his name again, is Giovanni Lopez. So what happened is Giovanni Lopez, so he ended up being, he ended up dying from traumatic, a traumatic brain injury. The, the cause of his brain injury, the cause of his arrest or his detainment was because of COVID where they have a, fat, a face mask mandate in, in Mexico. So I guess he wasn't wearing a face mask and the police ended up detaining him. And then it just escalated where he eventually died from a traumatic brain injury. And he actually had a gunshot wound to his leg. Yeah. And it, 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 it's basically another portrayal of police brutality. So um, that's, a, that's an ongoing situation. So I'm going to read more into it to find out more information on it. Um, but he was arrested. So my first correction is in regards to the gentleman that we spoke about in one of our clips. I mentioned how in relation to the Black Lives Matter situation, how there's other countries that are, are in, who are looking on it and all that stuff. Uh, the similar situation happened in Mexico. A gentleman by the name of Giovanni Lopez was arrested in front of his home for not wearing a face mask because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Or at least allegedly not wearing a face mask. His brother recorded the arrest he was taken to, um, to jail. The next day they went to go find him and they actually told him that he was at the civil hospital of Guadalajara. And at the hospital, he died of a severe tra uh, traumatic brain injury. And also he had a gunshot wound to his leg. So it's, this is just another, another story of police excessiveness, excessive force, similar situation where Somebody having a broken tail light should not result in their death. Somebody not wearing a face mask should not result in someone's death, right? It's just excessive police force. Uh, ongoing excessive, excessive police force outside of the U.S. Like Sunday. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, it, it's, it, 
it shows that it's not just an issue of black and white. It's an issue of authority overstepping its bounds and moving from, and basically they're going under authority, not under, not under protection, not under service. So there's another going situation. I'm going to try to keep track of it, see more, get more information on it, see what it does in regards to the state of uh, Mexico. And hopefully there's not more situations that are similar to that, but I'm going to do some research and we'll see. Um, the other, another correction for me is where uh, I mentioned that WWE performed in Qatar because we were talking about Qatar. But it turns out they weren't performing in Qatar. And it's the same situation. It's Saudi Arabia. Um, it, Saudi Arabia is also a country that I just, ju it, you know, you kind of hear rumors of them kind of uh, um, protect, changing a little bit. They've allowed women to start driving again um, now. Um, they're kind of a little bit more liberal when it comes to certain rights, but they're still very, very questionable. And so, but anyways, they, the, the WWE actually performed in Saudi Arabia and so far they've had five pay-per-views, but it was the same situation. The girls couldn't, the women couldn't go uh, perform there the first time. Then they finally were able to perform and then they were, you know, in loose clothing. One, I guess one kind of um, silver lining to that was that they did, the WWE did do a nice little video package about how now there's women. So, be, so you know, in Saudi Arabia, I don't know if you know this, you know, in Saudi Arabia, a woman can't go anywhere in the public without being with a chaperone. So she has to be with a like brother, uncle, you know, whatever, cousin. So, but then they ended up not being allowed into the first show. But they eventually started letting them go to the to the shows in Saudi Arabia for the WWE shows. So actually, they did show a video package about, hey, now women in Saudi Arabia get to see women performing. And then it's kind of like one of those situations where maybe it's pushing women's right in Saudi Arabia to be better. But they still have a lot of questionable human rights um, situations. So same vein to me about in regards to like kind of like uh, Another correction is Mulan cost. Um, so I mentioned that that the $200 million budget, that was correct, but we didn't know the exact numbers of what they've earned so far. So the last time I checked, actually, I believe it was on Wednesday, it, it, it was around $37.6 million. But actually, I just checked again today, it's actually at $42 million now. So they're still growing. So even in the last few days, they've still gained $5 million. But obviously, that's a big, big um, chunk of a difference. But I did read an article where they were talking about how Disney is actually still considering it a success. Because mm -hmm. I guess they're looking at it in relations to their premium plus Disney memberships. So maybe that's still something that they're going to look into. So, so hold on. You said it's made 42 million so far uh, uh, at the last time you checked. Yeah. So is that literally just 42 million divided by 30? That's what they have. So that's what they have so, versus I guess profit or, or, or. So that's like 1.4 million subscriptions um, yeah. for Bolo. That's. That's pretty good, actually, considering it's a change from what they would have had to do, which is, yeah. you know, releasing in theaters. And that's, that's My decent. question is, are they going to release Black Widow? No way. I know. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. Um, and then uh, one other correction, the death tolls in Iraq. Um, we did so, we didn't really know that, and actually nobody really knows the actual death tolls. Because it estimates from what? What did you say? Do you know it estimated from range of what so, the lower so, end to the higher end? So um, I can't remember what numbers I, I said, but I know that um, it equated to about three thousand yeah, Iraqi deaths every three months. So basically, a thousand a month, essentially. Yeah. So the the tip toll that I'm about to name is from um, Iraq Body Count Project, and they um, the count that I'm looking at they don't even include soldiers. So Iraqi soldiers or American soldiers, but civilians alone, which is honestly, that's, those are just things that should never happen, let alone at the account of their estimating from 185,000 to 208,000. Oh. So it's just, that, that's just a ridiculous number of civilians being killed. So, so if that thousand per month um, number is right, that's essentially 208 months, which is, um, Let's see, fifteen. A lot, a lot of time. Yeah, almost almost eighteen years worth of a thousand a month uh, level deaths. Yeah. So yeah, it, it it's close enough. You know, it's it's around that range. It's 
Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. And then, um, so I mentioned how Joe Biden hasn't talked about, so this is the one that, you know, when I mentioned, I mentioned how Joe Biden didn't talk about, the, and I actually read up on it myself too. Again, I corrected myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you don't fire me, I fire me. So anyways, but, uh, so he, Joe Biden did speak on it sometime in May. And then actually, I won't lie, one thing that he did say, he, he basically denied vehemently that he didn't do anything but he did mention that women should be listened to, which is a big difference over what Donald Trump did, which is completely denied, got sued, lost, but didn't say anything about how women should be listened to. The, the, the latest thing Trump said about um, his latest accuser was that <laughs> basically suggesting that he didn't do it because she's not his type. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean. We know his type. That's, He'd be that's... dating his daughter if he wasn't his daughter. Okay, well, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't go there, but uh, <laughs> I did. All right, so um, that's corrections. I don't know. Did you have any corrections, or do you only wanted to correct me? That was that one correction. You got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's corrections. Okay. Cool. All right, man. So let's get into our top five sports moments. Uh, do you want to kick it off? Actually, do you want to do one and one? Or do you want to and do you want to do it in order? I got an order. So if you want to do our, our five and our five through, I do want to real quickly mention um, just two honorable mentions that I wouldn't be surprised if one of them is on yours. Mm -hmm. Just two, and they both come from the NBA. Okay. And, and I'm not actually not a huge NBA fan. I'm like most, a lot of casual fans that I watch, I watch the finals and mostly literally the finals, like the, the last few games. And then half the time, if it's a game seven, I'm like, all right, I'll watch this one. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that's like one of the only games that I watch, but Two things that I wanted to mention, both of them um, involving LeBron James. Okay. The first one is him bringing the Ca Cleveland Cavaliers from a three-on-one deficit to beat the Golden State Warriors. Honestly, even if you're not a LeBron fan, you got to be like that. That was an amazing story for the, st the, the city of Cleveland. You know, just, just from the fact that he left them, he came back, and he literally said, I am only – he basically said, I'm only coming back to get them a championship, which just, I, th I feel like that was a huge chip on his shoulder considering the fact that he tried. People seem to think, I don't know why people seem to think that he like gave up on Cleveland when I'm like, Cleveland was, the, the owner of Cleveland wasn't giving him anything to work with for so long. That's why he had to leave to Miami, go win a few championships there and then come back. But it was an awesome story to see him bring his city back. You saw the emotion at the end of that game. That was just a good – that was just an amazing story. So that's my, my number one. And the actually the flip side of LeBron James is actually uh, the Jurassic Park team of the Dallas Mavericks because they were a bunch of old folk beating Dwayne oh, Wade, yes. Bosh, and LeBron James the first year that they formed that super team. To me, that was also amazing because my brother's a huge Dallas Maverick fan. I'm not a huge Dallas Maverick fan, but he's a huge Dallas Maverick fan. And then it was just – that was the first time that Dallas had ever won a championship in regards to the, you know, basketball – so that was that that's those are my two honorable mentions. They just both happen to have LeBron James and they both happen to have so if you don't like them, you're gonna like one of them. If you do like them, you're gonna like the other one. So okay. Um in that case, uh let me start with my number five and then you can go to your number five. Uh, I don't have honorable mentions. Um uh, my number five is my only non soccer moment of the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number five is Cleveland's um, first title. Um, it was – so I, I was rooting for the Golden State Warriors, but my goodness, coming down from 3-1, and that game seven might be the best um, basketball game I've watched, like basketball game period. It was so good right down to the wire, right down to Kyrie um, just going into hero mode. In those last, yeah. I think it was like 24 seconds of the game, they were tied, and oh, it was. And when it, he slaps that, um, he stops the one bucket. Yeah, yeah, with the block. Yeah, oh, yeah, man, that that is probably the greatest NBA game I've watched, and you couldn't help but um, feel happy for LeBron and the rest of the Cavaliers, you know. And then he goes, uh, Cleveland, this is for <laughs> you. I remember it so vividly. Uh, it was great. All right, what's your number five? My number five is not an actual sports moment, but it happened during a sporting event. It, it was just, I was, there was a, there was a time where I was like into Marvin Gaye 
mm. like from like when I was you you might know exactly what I'm about to mention um if you've researched this so I was huge into Marvin Gaye for a little while I was researching it, and then they told talked about how he did the national anthem during uh one of the one of the basketball I think it was an all-star game and he had like a drum machine with it and Marvin Gaye I'm going to link it. So I'll link it to, uh, so if anybody's looked at our, our page recently, you'll notice that there's a, there's somebody commenting named Zeus Zapata. That's me. <laughs> so even with my name, I killed the ZZ. So if, uh, if Zeno, if you're ever sick, it'd still be ZZ talk. Cause I'm still ZZ. So, <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. so anyway, I'll, I'll link, I'll link it on there, uh, where Marvin Gaye performs the song, but he's the only man that could make the national anthem actually exist. Okay. Uh, T-Pain, he did it once. <laughs> did he really? Yeah, he did the national anthem. Oh, he killed it. Um, okay. all, right. <laughs> all right, my number four. Like I said, the rest of this is going to be soccer related. Um, number four would have to be. It's a single game, right? It's not in the grand scheme of things. It's not not anything that you know will, will last in anyone's memory. But as a Newcastle United fan, this is one of one of the best games I've ever watched. It was Newcastle United versus Arsenal in 2011. And the, the story behind it uh, for me was that um, myself and two of my roommates were actually coaching um, rec league basketball, 13-year-olds. And we had um, practice to go to that morning, Saturday morning. Or was it Sunday morning? I don't remember. So uh, it was a weekend morning. We had practice to go to. And um, my two roommates had gone ahead. And at the time when I was, I was supposed to leave, Newcastle was losing 4-0 at halftime to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. And I got my clothes on, I showered, I was about to leave, Newcastle scored the first goal. I was like, okay, let me, let me watch a little more. And they scored again. And man, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be late to practice. <laughs> and I, I kept watching, uh, Joey Barton scored another goal. Uh, Joey Barton, anyone that watches Premier League knows that he's a problematic person, but uh, he was also a really good player. Uh, he just probably would get into trouble and get arrested for random things off the field. But um, the fourth the goal, soccer? yes, the fourth goal, fourth goal came from the late great Chick Tiote from Ivory Coast. Um, he he only ever scored one Premier League goal his entire time in the Premier League, and it was in this game to tie it against Arsenal four four from outside. It was a screamer, and ah. Uh, Till this day, every time it comes up on my memories or the Newcastle United fan page, I always share it to my Facebook because it's still, I still feel it till this day, just how excited every Newcastle fan was. So that's my number four moment. 4-4, four, four, Newcastle, Arsenal. All right. So don't worry, people. This is my only soccer um, top five. And the reason I put it in there is because I was there was it was it, and it wasn't joseph martinez beating the scoring record it was in tying the scoring record because that was my first mls game mm. that i had ever gone to and that's when i realized like that's the greatest game i've ever been to because i was exactly in the pit where all the you know where the drums were and the you know i was there i was in the i was in the in the in the mosh pit yeah because i've been to another game where i was a little bit away from it and i was like it's not you gotta if you got if you're going to an atlanta a, a united game you gotta go to that Support a section. Which, yeah. It's gotta You've got to go to that section. section. That section is like an amazing set. I really wish that energy would be coming, would come to the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Because if it did, I guarantee you the Atlanta Falcons would win more games because that, you know, especially if it wasn't piped. So that is like one of like the best things. So him tying a record, I believe it was August 3rd, 2000. Uh, that would be 2018. 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. So August 2018. He, he tied that record. I went for my birthday. I got, went ahead and got myself a birthday gift and got those tickets, went there. It was an awesome experience. And it just so happened that, it happened, that he happened to tie the record. And, that was and, like, awesome. and, he, and he broke it in, um, in Orlando. The next, yeah. The next game. Yeah, next game. And isn't Orlando, Orlando, like, MLS, isn't that Atlanta United? It's like big supposed to be our, our rivals, yeah, just because of geography. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, that's a great one. Um, so I'm on, what, number three now? Yeah. Um, number three, um, even though I'm not a fan of this club, I think anyone who watches the Premier League um, with any sort of attention, they, 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 they fell in love with this Cinderella story. And that's Leicester City winning the Premier League title 
with a 5,000 to one odds at the beginning of the season. So, um, Zeus, I don't know if you're familiar with like promotion and relegation, but essentially what, <laughs> so the, the, the way the Premier League works, the way most European leagues work is that you have your 20 teams in the top league. And then at the end of the season, whoever is the bottom three, they go to the league just below. And then three teams from the league just below come up and they get promoted, right? So three teams get relegated, three teams get promoted, right? Okay. Makes sense? All right. So this team, Leicester, um, they got promoted in 2015. Oh, no, sorry, in 2014, right? So then they played the 2014-15 season and ended up in 14th place. And then in the 2015-16 season, they started off the season with 5,000 to 1 odds to win the league, and they did it. They, oh, okay. they did it in a league that is usually dominated by like four teams, right? It's Manchester United, Manchester City, uh, Chelsea, you know, Liverpool, you know, those teams. And then you have Arsenal and Tottenham. But Leicester is not supposed to be in the conversation, and they did it. So that was the greatest sports story of that year. And it's, it's the, I think it's the greatest Premier League story of, well, since the Premier League started in 92, right? Since they became their own um, league. So that's what number three. It reminds me a little bit. Then last year, wasn't there like a basketball team during March Madness that started at the very bottom of the of the bracket? Like they were, because I think they had like thirty two teams and they almost made it to the to the to the win. To the final four or the yeah, they, I think they made it to the final four. They just lost in the final four, uh, yeah. which would have been a good story too. But unfortunately, unfortunately for them, you don't get to be on ZZ ZZ Talk's top five. Yeah. Well, one of um, those a year when Butler University, Univers is it Butler University or but University of Butler? I think it's Butler University. Um, when they did something similar um, with the guy who became the Celtics coach, uh, Brad oh. Stevens. Yeah. Um, they, they came from like nowhere in Indiana and all of a sudden they were in the finals, but they lost to Duke. There's still a lot of good stories like that, kind of like a miracle on ice. Remember, uh, USA didn't have a chance, but they ended up be beating, um, you know, Mother Russia. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my number, that's your number three. My number three is actually... Uh, yeah, I was from, seeing three. Oh, okay. My, well, my three is from the Olympics in 1992. And obviously, I wasn't watching this, but this is just stuff that I looked up, and then it's just one of those stories that you just look at it, and you're just like, holy crap. Um so Derek Redman was running track. I don't know. You, I'm sure you've heard of the story. Derek Redman was running track. Literally at the beginning of his uh, at the beginning of his run, his hamstring or his no, I think it was his hamstrings snapped, mm. and he kept running. Then his dad came out of nowhere, and one of the security guards tried to stop him. He was like, "No, no, that's my son. That's my son." And he helped him. And then he his he, his dad told him, "You know, you don't have to finish this." And Derek Redman was like, "No, I have to finish this." And he just helped him. He limped. He helped him limp all the way to the um, to the to very finish. end. And at the very end, he he went by himself. And honestly, if you look at that story, if you by any chance, well, well, you know what? We'll try to link the major if we can every single one of these to to the to the comment section, just so y'all guys can check them out. Yeah. But that story is just like a phenomenal story. That just like, it, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. It makes you emotional if you ever look at it. You don't have to know anything about track. You don't have to know anything about Derek Redman. But if you look at that story, it, it's just that, that moment is like, it's an amazing story. Yeah. And you know what, if you, if you don't see links in the comment section, also check the description because in the description, I put links and also put timestamps, um, yeah. which, you know, especially if there's something in the clip that you'd rather skip to, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, do At production cost, you're at ZZ Talk, okay? Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, because time. Uh, that's your three. Okay. My number two. Um, soccer. It, it ties into, yeah, it's all soccer. It ties into <laughs> well, one of the ones you spoke of, and this is Atlanta United's uh, MLS Cup victory. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Against Portland. Um, I was there in the supporter section. Uh, that was that was such a crappy day outside. It was raining. It was cold. Um, but we had to make sure that we were the first ones in the stadium once the gate opened um, because we wanted to get our, our seats close enough in the support section. So um, we many were, people with the support the support sections. So okay, the way the um, Mercedes Benz is uh, laid out, you've got 
uh, sections that go from like 101 to 136 in like a circle. And then you've got your 200 levels and your 300 levels, but I'm going to stick to the 100 levels. Well, the 101, 136, and 102 are like, they would be the ones um, right in front of like the main door that comes from like um, mm -hmm. where the CNN center is and all that stuff. Um, and so they back, they're back in one of the goals. And the support section is, it's like general admission, right? So you don't need to have specific seats. And um, so if you, have a, if you have a ticket in that section, you can sit anywhere with your friends and all that stuff. And you, that's where you have the drum section and you have mm -hmm. constant chanting, constant, you know, um, uh, sha la la la, I forget. Oh yeah, we are the A from way down south, that one. So they, they have, yeah. By the way, is that, are they doing Star Wars when they do that? Because it sounds a lot like Darth Vader's um, theme. I don't think so. Pay attention to it. It does. It sounds just like Darth Vader's little... Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I never thought I about it. it. But, um, okay, so yeah, so, so, so basically that's where all the chanting and stuff goes on. So in the supporter section, since it's general admission, you have to get in early. So we were standing right in front of the gate waiting for them to open it. And it was cold, it was rainy. And I, I started a chant. And then everyone out there was like chanting like with us. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. So this is cool. we're just doing that to stay warm. And then, uh, so we get in there and obviously uh, the rest is history. Atlanta beats Portland 2-0. Uh, first time that I've been anywhere where Atlanta wins something, yeah. of, of like a trophy, you know. So it was it's great, memorable. I'll never forget it. I still have my season ticket um, thingy uh, cards in my room. So that's my number two. Uh, um, that was actually close to being my number four, but since I wasn't there, I didn't didn't choose that one. Mm. I'd be selfish on that. <laughs> so my number two, two is coming from the UFC. Is actually Julio Jones winning. His heavy, his light heavyweight title from Shogun. Um, Sorry, John Jones. Yeah, like, who Jones? Light heavyweight title from Shogun. Who? Uh, if anybody knew about this prior to, John Jones is obviously very well known now for his lack of common sense in a lot of things, and you know him just doing stupid stuff here and there, and just kind of proving the point that no matter where you are, if you get in a position of power, sometimes you can just start making really idiotic decisions that just don't make sense to a lot of other people, right? Because because honestly, if you, sometimes you can fly too close to the sun. Exactly. Uh, but he, before that, he was a humble, like, honestly, like, he was like one of the, looked like, was like one of the humblest dudes that you ever saw. But um, when Shogun Hua beat, so prior to that, prior to this, uh, Mashida was the light heavyweight championship, right? Leoto Machida mm -hmm. was a light heavyweight champion. And a lot of people thought Leoto Machida was going to be a champion for a long time because he mastered using karate in the UFC, which karate allowed him to be away from people and not have to, you know, not have to get too close because he was just able to use the, his karate because he was a black belt in karate and was able to actually translate it good into US, into MMA. A lot of people thought he was going to be champion for years. Then him and Shogun Hua have a really great fight um, that I thought Shogun won. But the decision went to Leoto Machida. They had a rematch. Leoto Machida loses because um, he, I, I personally think he dropped it, changed his game, and he ended up not doing the karate. He tried to go close because a lot of people were trying to say that he's a boring fighter. So I think he was trying to be entertaining. He was entertaining because he got knocked out. And Leoto Machida became champion. Everyone thought Leoto Machida Shogun. was going to be. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Shogun became champion. Everyone thought Shogun who was going to be a champion for years, too. I don't know where John Jones gets the uh, – so originally Rashad Evans was going to get the championship uh, fight. Rashad Evans got hurt. Julio Jones uh, – I mean, John Jones is asked to uh, to go into in the fight. He accepts it, even though him and um, uh, Rashad Evans are partners or, or teammates. Rashad Evans leaves or whatnot after um, John Jones becomes champion. But anyways, he becomes champion. He decimates uh, – Leo um, Shogun Hua, he just decimates him, like destroy. He bodies him for like a whole round. A lot of people don't know this. The the, the referee stopped it, but if you look closely, you actually see Leoto Machida tapping from Shogun. getting getting Shogun. Shogun, you said Leoto. Oh my bad. Yeah. You if you look at the fight, 
you see Leota Mach you see Shogun Hua tapping on the floor. Did, did you see it? Um, Have you ever seen it, that fight? I saw the fight a long time ago. I haven't rewatched it. I've seen a lot if of John Jones. You look at close to that fight, you will see Shogun tapping at the end, right when the referee calls it off. So I still think it should have been a tap out. But yeah. rest is history. Uh, John Jones is a superstar. You know, obviously he's doing all this stuff. Even though he's to me, he's tainted a lot of his um, his his legacy. reputation, his legacy. He's still the greatest. He's such the greatest MMA fighter of all time, honestly. That there's guys like um, Daniel Cormier, who in another time would be considered the greatest MMA fighters of all time. But it's like John Jones is like all the way up here, and everybody else is here. So even the greatest ones that are right underneath him are still, they're still, they, he's still on ranks. Like it's just like that. He honestly is amazing. Hopefully he becomes a better person again. But anyways, that's my number two, him winning the um, the UFC light heavyweight championship. Okay. All right. That's a good number two. Uh, my number one, uh, the, it was, this one was never in doubt. Really, I was trying soccer? to. I was, yeah, it is soccer. <laughs> I was trying to come up with my two to five, but my number one was never in doubt. Uh, it's from the 90, 1996 Olympics um, in it, well, the Atlanta Olympics, but really this was played in Athens, Sanford Stadium. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the, the Nigerian national team's path to the gold medal, um, to, to winning gold medal in soccer. Um, and it, in that path, they had to play, um, they had to beat Brazil and then beat Argentina in the final. Um, two powerhouse teams in, in the sport. Um, and from that team, um, a lot of legends were born uh, that, that would end up going to like greatness in European uh, soccer from... Uh, so this was a youthful team? Yeah, so uh, the way they do soccer in um, the Olympics is you have to have a team of uh, under 23 and then you can have three, oh, okay. three senior players. Um, so um, Nwankwo Kanu... Um, uh, Rashidi Yakini, um, Baba Yaro, uh, God, there, there's so many of them that just came from that team and just became superstars. And any Nigerian who follows the sports and who's of my age or older, they know that team and they're, you know, they're, they're legends at home. So that's my number one. Okay. All right. Speaking of the Olympics, real quickly, if you could tell me. No, the World Cup, I'm sorry. The NAFTA World Cup, so the, as I like to call it. Is it the NAFTA World Cup or the NAFTA Olympics, the one where North America is between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S.? Is it the Olympics that they're sharing or is it the World Cup, uh, a World Cup that they're sharing? It's the you know? World Cup, World Cup. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to be, if they play a game here in NAFTA, Is that even going? a question? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Are yeah, you going to... Yeah. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> How many chances do you get to go to a World Cup game? Yeah, damn right. Okay, just want to make sure. Just, just to let you know that we might have to raise funds for uh, for Zeno to go to the. <laughs> yeah. No, that's shoot, man. I'll go into my savings. <laughs> Hope you don't tell your parents that. So, anyways, <laughs> so my number one is actually my number one wouldn't be my number one if Kyle Shanahan had done his job two weeks later. But my number one is still a great moment. I still love watching this game. It's actually the Atlanta Falcons versus the Green Bay Packers at the NFC Championship. The reason why, if honestly, if it hadn't been for the fact that this is the very final game of the Georgia Dome, then it probably wouldn't be on here. But the fact that they just closed out the Georgia Dome in such an amazing fashion, yeah. it's just, I mean, they put them through a buzz. And you couldn't have told me that the Atlanta Falcons were not going to win the Super Bowl after that. They, they had the makings of a... That was such, it was such an amazing game. And I, and I remember it vividly, too. I've, I've gone back. And you know how the NFL puts, like, nine-minute clips of games? Have, the, have you ever done the NFL um, Turning Point? Uh, no. They have an NFL Turning Point episode on that. Okay. And it's, it's so beautifully, um, like, done. The NFL, the, the NFL has great production. So they, they can make, like, they can make, like, the – Cleveland Browns versus the Detroit Lions game be like it looked like an epic showdown, but uh, but but if you ever like I can just keep looking back at that game. I do have to go because that's the last. <laughs> <laughs> but um, hey, it but was yeah, a title. That, that you know, game is like freaking amazing. It was a title. We won the NFC title. Uh, so it's something. Zeno again. Yeah. 